So what's up? I wanted to show the uh, states in this uh, current game I'm creating in Corona Lua called uh, it's Corona SDK written in Lua called Zombie Stick, and it has a state machine for every single entity like this player. Uh, if you move him, if you jump, if you jump forward, you attack, and it manages uh, what you do, what you can do in certain states as well as regenerating stamina. If you're not moving, right? If you're moving or doing actions, it'll reduce stamina. But as soon as you stand still and it goes to the, the idle state, if you stay there for a minute, it'll go to the resting state, and then you regenerate really quickly. So you'll notice one, two, three, four, five, right? So that's the player. The zombie, the enemy over here, you'll notice that he has his own states for moving and everything else. I'm still uh, making his states a lot better. Before, it was all in the sprite. Now I'm, I'm moving out the states. The problem I had is how do I get this zombie to attack this player and have their states know about that? So I decided to use the runtime. So let me show you the, uh, the, the zombie's sprite. So the zombie sprite is, a, is this a normal class, a display object. However, he has an idle state. And what he's concerned about is as soon as he goes to the idle state, start moving. It should be ready, but whatever. Um, and, and handle collision targets. So if I'm colliding with something and I'm a zombie, start eating it, right? So I go to the, the eat player state. So if I go to the eat player state, he says, all right, stop moving because I'm eating. And if I get hit, I need to know about it. By somebody, somewhere, anywhere... I, I receive that global event, aka the runtime. It's very similar to uh, stage.loaderinfo.sharedevents and flashbar, like the global event bus. This is a local event handler. If the zombie, for whatever reason, detects a collision that's ended, where the player no longer touches the zombie, and it's the one that I'm actually currently targeting, then I need to know that as well. So while I'm in this state, uh, go ahead and reduce the damage of whatever target player I'm currently munching on. Um, if I do get hit, get out of here. Okay, I got hit hard enough, so go to the temporary injured state. And if the players move, just go back to idle and see if I can find another player. Maybe that's the player who left. Maybe the player died. You know, whatever else, right? So that's the zombie's idle state. The actual each state, and of course this is step one, right? Step one of if zombies hit, it doesn't matter where it comes from. It could even be another state for that matter, right? Um, the actual e player state, or the temporary injured state, basically doesn't do anything. It listens to hit, but that's it. The whole point is to stay here temporarily for one second so the zombie doesn't continually eat you. If you hit him with a sword, he's going to, like, for a second have to go, whoa, that really hurt, and stop eating you, right? So you could continually hit the zombie, and he won't be able to ever go back to, you know, eating you, right? This gives you a player a chance to get away. Um, notice if the player hits him again, it'll reset the timer, so they could indefinitely stay in the state until the zombie dies, right? Um, so that's how I handle the whole global event in every state you know, has the option of listening to that global event handler. And vice versa, this particular state is the one who actually initiated. Hey, I hit a zombie. By the way, if this is you, I want you to react, right? So that way, in the uh, e-player state, he knows that, hey, if uh, a zombie was hit and it is, in fact, me, then I need to get out of here because I got hit and I'm temporarily injured. So this is the only way I could think to do a communication mechanism between states. It's basically using the, the global event handler and then locals for the entity for, you know, anything else. Now, here's the second problem I have, and I don't know if this is good. There's this weird symbiotic relationship between the state and the actual sprite. So, this collision handler is... There's no such thing as uh, in, in Lua's or Corona's SDK's collisions, or Box to D, I guess, for that matter, to detect if there is a current collision. You have to utilize events to learn if it began or ended, as well as, you know, pre-collision, post-collision, right? So, if I remove event handler, a collision happens. There's no way later to go, hey, by the way, were you colliding before I had time to add my event listener? Therefore, I have to always keep it on, and anytime I hit a player, I basically put it in an array. If I the player goes away, like let's say I walk away, right, then this will fire, say, hey, it's uh, no longer colliding. And by the way, if it's the one that you are targeting, right, the first one that you hit, then just I want to let you know that the target player you were currently touching is now gone. He moved away, he karate chopped you, whatever, right? I If I don't do this, there's no way for when the uh, zombie's idle state idle state for the zombie. There's no way for it to know when it first boots up in the interstate if it's actually connecting, you know, hitting anything. So I had to do that so it has an opportunity to get this target player from its actual array inside of the zombie, the basically the entity itself, right? So I think it's fine, but it's just this, I don't know the rules of engagement here. Like for robot legs and, you know, where they have mediators or, you know, pr parsley and swizz where they have presentation models, like I get that. But for the state, I just didn't know if this was good. So anyway, that's really what I'm looking for feedback on, and I'll put some of this code on um, GitHub so you can take a look. Thanks very much.